Hey guys, hey, I've been super busy lately and just doing a ton of stuff. I've been working on the greenhouse and and uh, we started a tiny house project and you know for my wife and and uh, so and then we had a big wind storm and and probably in the neighborhood we had sustained winds of 50 miles an hour and one big massive gust I don't know how to measure it uh, really but I mean, it shook the whole house and, and it destroyed my wind generator. And uh, so that's one of the things I wanted to go over with today. Um, there was a couple concerns I had with this wind generator. And the first one was the pole was, was just too narrow. And uh, one of the other things was, is uh, that I didn't realize was a problem until uh, I diagnosed what had actually happened. And, uh, but the couplings that I used uh, were just a weak point. And that's actually where it wound up breaking. The, uh, the tension wires, there was a lot of factors that kind of, uh, that sort of contributed to the overall failure. Uh, and if any one of them would have, would have, you know, been different, the failure wouldn't have happened. It would have survived uh, the big massive gust. Um, all my dead man held just fine. Um, uh, but what I uh, what I noticed was, you know, when it would blow hard, the tower would bow at the top, you know, and and so the so the smaller pipe was an issue. I should have went with two two inch pipe, uh, and I'll show what I did uh, here with that to fix that. You know, I took uh, the rebar and um, and uh, I, I created a, stru a a truss structure along the the inch and a half pipe to strengthen it um i've also added um oh well let's get back to the failure here so uh so i noticed that the tower would bow over not only that but the wires had stretched and slackened a little bit uh the top one and this and the middle wire and it was creating a flex in the joint um of the pipe and that's where the failure happened when the hard gust hit it just it bent the tower um, just enough where it was able to break the connection. Well, I hate that rooster. That thing just won't shut up. And so it broke that connection and uh, um, down came the tower. And as you can imagine, the, the wind generator blades, I mean, they were going a trillion miles an hour and, and uh, they blew up into a million pieces. And, um, but testimony to this, uh, to the actual, um, to the actual generator itself, it, it withstood the impact and wasn't damaged at all. And I uh, was really fearful that maybe the shaft might have gotten bent a little bit, but that is a pretty big gnarly shaft on that thing. The tail blew up. I wound up repairing that. I'll show you how I did that. Um, so there was a lot of upgrades and a lot of things that I changed on this tower to, uh, to help its survivability in high winds but uh so yeah so um so yeah and the other thing i did was i actually purchased some 5 30 seconds cable and uh we put that on the top wire i might wind up putting it on the middle wire as well i don't think it's necessary but of course i wouldn't have thought it was necessary to begin with so um i've built a few wind towers over the years and they've all have survived but i've done a lot of things different on this one tower that i didn't do on the other ones i took some shortcuts and um for example my couplings i, I never used screw in couplings until this point um, i had always made collars that the pipe would slide in and then i would bolt the collars down now on this system here i just used the trusses and uh and i welded the pipe the first the two top joints because that was the one under the most stress we'll see if the bottom one needs to be welded or not i'm going to keep a close eye on that and boy that rooster i tell you it just won't shut up every time he sees me out here I, he just goes to town just crowing away and uh so anyways um so where was i so yeah uh the the, the truss and i brought the truss all the way up to the top here. Now, one of the other complaints that I had was the looseness of the actual shaft that went inside the inch and a half pipe, and it wasn't quite a good fit. So I cut 
um, the pipe in several places, several strategic locations uh, where I was able to actually uh, clamp down on the pipe itself and, and reduce the diameter where I was able to put some muffler clamps on it and uh, actually clamp down tightly on there and then that in addition to the two screws that they supplied with the generator itself. Now, um, after some research, I've discovered that these wind generators do come with like an adapter and that adapter is made to fit perfectly onto the stub of the wind tower um, or the stub of the, the wind generator. And so that might be something to look forward or, you know, look into if you're, if you're looking to buy one of these Istabreezes. Yeah. And so kudos to Istabreeze. Um, you know, somebody had made a comment that, uh, something to the, um, to, you know, to the effect that, uh, that I was blaming, you know, the, their system on Istabreeze itself, you know. And uh, I think they could have come up with a better system as far as how they attach it to a piece of standard pipe. I mean, um, you know, plumbing pipe is, is probably the most common material, you know, that would be used for a wind generator. And so uh, it just would make sense to me if I was a manufacturer that I would, you know, purposely manufacture something that would, that would uh, um, you know, be able to, uh, you're going to get shot, rooster. I'm going to shoot you right in your beak, your big loud beak. Oh, he's just antagonizing me. But you know, to, to properly interface with, with, you know, standard plumbing pipe and, and that. And uh, so, because, you know, inch and a half plumbing pipe is, is basically everywhere. Um, and so and maybe they could even give like an adapter kit to adapt it up to two inch pipe, which really what is what the size of the tower should be for, for this particular wind generator. Um, and, and as far as that goes, um, even probably if you have really high wind, you know, areas, I would even bump it up to two and a half inch, uh, thin wall fire sprinkler pipe. Um, and, uh, so some of you guys may not know what I'm talking about, but you know, most everybody, at least here in the States, is, is familiar with fire sprinklers. Well, you can look up a fire sprinkler company in your local area, and, and uh, they most likely will have some pipe that they'll sell you. Um, and uh, it's the Schedule schedule 10 or Schedule 15, um, you know, thin wall pipe, which two and a half inch pipe is, is really actually lighter than probably two inch Schedule 40, but it's it's more rigid, it's, it's stiffer. I actually uh, put a 10 foot turbine on on um, on that same material one time and it worked out fantastic so it's plenty strong um, and so there's some options right there as far as you know tower size and stuff but I think I've got the tower uh, where it can withstand uh, some pretty good forces now um, you know the break and strength of 530 second cable is somewhere around the neighborhood of a thousand pounds and uh, you know I really hope I don't see those type of winds again um, well, if we see winds high enough to exert a thousand pounds of force on the tower, I guess is what I'm trying to say is, then my house is probably going to get blown over. So what difference does it make anyways? And my truck's going to blow over and roll down the hill like a tumbleweed. But, um, but yeah, so, um, I've got a lot more coming. Uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to, I'm going to show you some of the stuff I've been doing on the greenhouse and, uh, you know, maybe we'll make a future video on that. And, uh, it's kind of a special greenhouse. It's underground. And, uh, uh, you know, um, I was kind of inspired by a fella in Three Forks, Montana. You can look up Underground Greenhouse in Three Forks, Montana. Maybe I'll try and find it and put a link in the description. Um, you know, he's he's been growing citrus and all kinds of stuff in his greenhouse. And it's been really cool. Um, and uh, I actually, you know, John's his name. And, and uh, I actually went down there and visited him myself. And he showed me around. He's got quite a rock collection, too. That, that should be another video for him, you know, but uh, yeah, but he doesn't really make videos. I think a YouTuber from outside came in, was impressed by it. But, uh, oh, anyways, folks, listen, you're gonna wanna go to santansolar.com. I purchased uh, almost 50 solar panels from these folks uh, at a cost after shipping of around $50 a panel. Now, the fewer you order, the higher your shipping costs are gonna be. 
but the panels themselves they're used uh, they're about three to four years old uh, they sell different panels at different times so you're going to want to call and talk to them what your options are um, i am not sponsored by santan solar i just felt impressed to bring this you know new info you know whenever i get new info like this i like to bring it to you guys and and uh this, this is a screaming hot deal i've tested the panels they work great uh but yeah so 250 watt panel they're gigantic panels i mean they're they're about that wide and they're really tall and and uh you know i put the voltage meter to them and they're putting out uh good juice and everything and and they're really worth it so they're they're they come around you know the ones i purchased were 35 dollars a panel you know which added up you know price per watt that's you can't beat that anywhere and uh you know so with shipping and everything it was around 50 dollars uh a panel and uh my first order i think i ordered 18 and my second order i ordered um you know uh um you know 30 or so of those puppies so it was 48 panels all together and uh what a super deal in the future i'm hoping to um i've got so many panels now what i'd like to do is i'd like to uh, dedicate a bank of solar panels to actually heat some uh, hot water uh, or actually use it to to to, to um, maybe, maybe I'll make a bank of you know make it switchable where I could use it for a baseboard heater just directly power it with DC current it doesn't matter I mean baseboard heaters are designed for AC but they'll work just fine with DC you know it's just just uh, it's just an induction heater and 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 so it, you know direct current works just as equally as good as ac on those and and um so and same thing with uh you know a, a water heater um you can buy a 220 uh water heater element and if i run enough panels in series what i'm hoping to do is is just run 220 dc right to my water heater um, it can turn itself on and off and regulate itself from there and um, go through all the controls and everything it should work just fine um, but we'll see uh, so you guys are going to want to stay tuned for that as well but thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one